Can Nikola Motors solve the hydrogen dilemma? Whether you like diesel or not, the reality is that the heavy duty trucking industry is headed towards electrification. Whether it be lithium ion batteries or fuel cells, companies and automakers are investing like crazy to make sure they are at the top of their game to not get phased out with all the internal combustion engine bans we're expected to see by 2040. Numerous studies have shown us that for long haul trucking applications and aviation and shipping, hydrogen will be the zero emissions fuel to take on the charge. However, for the trucking space on road, there are some issues that companies like Nikola Motors, Hyundai, and Freightliner are trying to solve, which is the hydrogen bottleneck. Because as you can see, unlike electricity, hydrogen is not widely available as a commercial fuel. Modern vehicles rely mostly on ethanol, gasoline, and diesel, and we already have a grid that can transmit electricity from producers to consumers. That means that although electric trucks can be quite impractical from a recharging time and weight perspective, they do have the most upfront and easily available infrastructure because all you need to do is create a substation, a charging block, and create the right power conversion systems at your particular facility. However, the same can't be said for hydrogen because although hydrogen is widely used in various industries in North America from oil refining to glass manufacturing and steel production, it isn't available on a retail level to your average consumer. And that problem right there is what needs to be solved before we invest in fuel cell trucks at big scale. So what better to do than to look at the company that is solely mission focused on solving that particular problem. In this video, I want to explain Nikola's hydrogen strategy, what resources they have at bay to help solve this problem and understanding the probabilities of them succeeding on this charge. But as usual folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I think it's safe to say folks that Nikola has been at the center of attention of a lot of drama and things over the past 36 months, whether it be for the better or for the worse. On the bright side here, we had Nikola demonstrate the first mass producible battery electric class A truck in North America with the tray which launched in 2021. And although sales in the short term have not been as enthusiastic as the company made it out to be in 2020, a lot of those reasons are simply out of the company's control, whether it be limited charging infrastructure, an upcoming recession that is cutting the budgets of most logistics companies, or the simple lack of company cash available to invest in 200 to $300,000 trucks. However, because Nikola is a growth startup, they have the opportunity to explore different markets at the same time, unlike some of the OEMs in this industry like Kenworth, Peterbilt, or Freightliner. And that is where their hydrogen fuel cell truck, expected to launch by the end of this year, plays in. Hydrogen is undoubtedly going to become a commodity in the very near future. Just like crude oil is used to make gasoline, diesel, and other fuels we use on a day-to-day -day basis for the economy, hydrogen is going to become the renewable commodity of the very near future, which means heavy-duty trucking, which can provide faster refueling times, lower weights, and longer ranges, could be one of the biggest beneficiaries of this shift. And as of right now, the U.S. already has plenty of capacity to produce such hydrogen at scale from various factories across the country. Whether that be for metals, ammonia, methanol, or refining, there are big examples of hydrogen production locations that are already used for backup power, forklifts, PEM electrolysis, fuel cell buses, and yes, even cars. And although most hydrogen is produced Close to where it is typically used, there exists still a 1600 mile hydrogen pipeline on the southern coast of the United States. This means that if the infrastructure needs to be expanded to such a place where hydrogen needs to go between two places consistently, then a pipeline can be built successfully. However, as any engineer or project planner would tell you, that is simply one half of the hydrogen ecosystem story. Because for somebody like Nikola, who is selling fuel cell trucks 
to fleet and logistics businesses, you need to figure out a way to get the hydrogen from the point of storage to the actual customer. Just like liquor tankers transport gasoline from refineries all the way to Shell, Chevron, and Exxon Mobil gas stations, you will need a similar ecosystem for hydrogen. And luckily, Nikola's Hyla business unit has some important solutions currently under development. Whether it be the hydrogen mobile refueler, the tube storage trailer, or the transport trailer itself, there is a wide array of packages and technologies that Nikola has experimented with to best suit the charging and longevity concerns of most of their prospective customers. The tube storage trailer is going to store around 7,500 PSI worth of hydrogen, which can fill up around 16 full trucks that has to be paired with the mobile refueler, which will allow for the dispensing of that hydrogen in a clean and safe way to the truck at the right pressure. However, if that is too much capacity, using a transport trailer like on the right would actually make even more sense because this one combines the technologies of both into one with less capacity. And although this seems extremely complicated on the surface, this strategy does make quite a bit of sense. And why is that the case? Because most consumers and businesses don't invest in their own refueling or charging infrastructure. As somebody who owns a gas vehicle, I don't invest in the gas station next door at which I go every day to fill up my gas tank. Neither does somebody who drives a Tesla Model S because the infrastructure was built by Tesla themselves. And just like Freightliner or Peterbilt don't build their own diesel gas stations, Nikola is not going to do the same. Instead, they're going to make sure that the supply of their fuel goes to the right customers particularly because they happen to be the ones that are first investing in fuel cells. The idea here is that because Nikola is one of the very first mass producible fuel cell automakers in North America, they can control the demand of the molecule themselves, which means they can tailor the supply properly by navigating partnerships and offtake agreements. Because for areas where there's very high concentration of demand, Nikola can invest with its partners to build physical refueling stations from the ground up. Whereas for their customers that are more remotely located, they can invest in Nikola's Hyla mobile refueler with an offtake agreement from one of Nikola's production facilities or third party businesses. And although a lot of hydrogen today is produced from natural gas, Companies that are partnered with Nikola like TC Energy and Travel Centers of America are making sure it is either blue or green hydrogen primarily. And what this will hopefully allow for is the monetization of the entire hydrogen value chain. Because just off of the long haul trucking industry, you cannot create enough demand to get the entire hydrogen ball rolling. There's a lot of companies that have invested in green hydrogen plants, but they need the right customers to be able to use that hydrogen to continue to scale. And those customers include someone like Nikola Motors and their own end users. And this right here is why Nikola could have the best shot in the overall North American trucking space to help solve this hydrogen dilemma. Obviously, a lot of investment, execution, and capital will be required from Nikola Motors because the industry right now is simply way too young. However, inter-regional coalitions in the U.S. are growing at a rapid pace for hydrogen. Not only did the DOE just announce its regional clean hydrogen plan, but companies like Kenworth are now adding fuel cell trucks to their own fleet with technologies from Toyota. And with the fuel cell market expected to grow at a 75% compound annual growth rate over the next 10 years, investors are also setting aside a lot of their positioning for this nascent industry. Overall, these things could come together and create a great recipe to bring hydrogen on the road, not tomorrow, but today. As usual, guys, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts on whether or not someone like Nikola can solve this chicken and egg problem. As usual, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.